Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this Tuesday evening, July 18th in the Locker Room. I'm Alan Locker. Two-time Emmy Award winner Michael Corbett is here tonight to discuss his upcoming return to CBS Daytime's The Bold and the Beautiful. Michael will be playing Judge Evan Scott, who presides over Sheila Carter's high-stakes court hearing. Michael starts airing this Friday, July 21st, so don't miss it. Michael is best known to CBS Daytime viewers for his long run as the villain David Kimball on The Young and the Restless. He recently took part in the celebration honoring the show's 50th anniversary. He was voted Daytime's most lovable cad by People Magazine, and he's also starred on Ryan's Hope and Search for Tomorrow. A two-time Emmy and Broadway World Best Actor Award winner, he is also host correspondent for the syndicated entertainment news magazine Extra and senior producer and host of Extra's Mansions and Millionaires. Starting his career on Broadway, he is a seasoned actor who has starred in numerous television series, including Zoe 101, which is being rebooted as Zoe 102 on Paramount Plus this fall. He is also currently the executive producer of the Daytime Emmy Award nominated Life After Death with Tyler Henry on Netflix. Michael also just finished filming a role in the upcoming season two of the popular web series, The Disappointments. I am so excited to welcome Michael Corbett back to the locker room. Hey, Michael. Wow, that, that was a lot. You, you're doing a lot. <laughs> you're a busy guy. Yeah, you know, I knock on wood, yes. Things are, yes. Things are... and, and in between, you know, you're, you're renovating a house. So you... that's why we're here in what looks like a dentist waiting room. <laughs> because it's going to be my new office, but there's nothing in here but a lamp from the garage and an old chair. Well, you're going to have to send pictures of the office so everybody can see the transformation when it is done. I will, I will. How is summer treating you? You know, it's, summer's been really great. I, uh, you know, been working on all these projects and things have been really busy, you know, wrapping up that, that Netflix series that I was producing and then uh, renovating this new house, working on that other show, The Disappointments. Zoe 101 is being rebooted. Um, and then and then I get a call from my agent and he says, well, you're going back to daytime. And I went, oh, my God, David Kimball lives from <laughs> And he said, nope, big surprise. You're going to Bold and the Beautiful. They're like, oh, wow, even better. So, so yeah, it's been an exciting summer so far. So I love that. So it was a phone call you got from your agent who says, you know, there's Judge Evan Scott. Like, well, what? <laughs> and I really, I'm like, well, oh, but, but he said it's the Bells. So um, since it's, you know, since it's anything for the Bell family, I'm, I'm in. Just tell me where to where to show up and who to play. Well, speaking of showing up, what was it like going back to the CBS studio and shooting it there? Uh, I got to tell you, it was pretty great. Um, it was really sort of wonderful walking back through those same doors. Um, yeah, I, I just kept wanting to turn left instead of turning right in the <laughs> hallway because there's Young and the Rest of the Songs on one side of the hallway and Bold and the Beautiful is on the other. But um, there were so many people that cross over in the production from from the production team, uh, from wardrobe, uh, stage managers, makeup and hair, and to the executive producer Ed Scott, who you know is just fantastic, and he was my executive producer when I was on Young the Restless, and then some of the cast members. So it was kind of a surreal experience, and really, it's really fun on on, on showing up there again. I love that. I love that they reached out. That, that's really great. Well, how about we watch a, a short clip? Great. Let's see. Here we go. Mr. Spencer and Mr. Forrester, I have to commend you for going above and beyond, for protecting your family. I am well aware of the history Miss Carter has with the Forrester family. She has terrorized you for years, and it's understandable that you want to see her behind bars. Dr. Finnegan, I can only imagine how difficult this must be for you to see your mother in handcuffs. And I sympathize with you and your family for the pain she's caused you as well. Had you worked with any of those gentlemen before? Had, yes, I of course, uh, Don Diamant. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, Kimberlyn Brown, which was I just, that was so, she's in the room 
there, you can't see her. But um, yeah, so that was really great. And everybody, everybody was, was wonderful. It was kind of um, a little uh, daunting to come back in on the very first scene that I had to do was in front of like 10 cast members um, with a big giant technical monologue, uh, which went on and on and on and on and on. But, uh, but it was great. It was, well, well, judges and lawyers always have a lot to say. Oh my God. And they all, and it's always, you know, murder in the first degree or is it murder in the, or is it first degree murder or is it murder de degree, first degree murder or murder in the first degree? It's yeah. It's, it's all. <laughs> Had you played a judge before? No, I've never played a judge before. I played a doctor and a lawyer and, and all those things, but I've never played a judge. And I, I kind of like it because, you know, you don't, you don't screw around with the judge. He kind of has the last word. So there's in, with one of the counselors, I was able to just be like, please sit down, just sit down. Yeah, so it's it's fun to be judgmental and dismissive, and yet also then find a, a nice balance of being very um, uh, empathetic as well to other people's pain. So it's 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 it was really it's really a fun role. Uh, I assume you know we all need judges on daytime dramas. I mean, he could always return, couldn't he? You know, um, <laughs> as they say, stay tuned. That's all I know. Uh, whatever they, whatever the direction they want to take it, uh, I'm there. Yeah, as long as Sheila doesn't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. I thought it would not be great. I yeah. love that. <laughs> I love that. I would last to do more scenes with, with Kimberly. Because she's Ter terrific. Terrorize the judge. Fine. Let, <laughs> let her. Let her. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, I mean, the show, you know, The Bold and the Beautiful, looking at all those guys in that room and, you know, uh, it's Sheila's trial, Kimberlyn Brown. I mean, the talent you are surrounded by. Oh, yeah. There's some wonderful, there were some wonderful actors in that room. and It's a great cast. You know, it's a wonderful sort of cohesive cast and uh, very happy to be part of it. Very excited. Well, everybody can see you this Friday. Tune in to The Bold and the Beautiful. Don't miss that. You also just wrapped season two of The Disappointments, where you play Philip Dwight, who is played by Trevor LaPaglia's new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited to see what Rich has concocted. Did you have fun uh, playing Philip? I did. I, I, I did because he's a television producer. <laughs> so, uh, so he's uh, he is producing a talk show and uh, can't say too much, but of course... He plucks one of the characters out of season one to make them a television star. So uh, it's really it's it's a fun role to play. Yeah. Yeah. Rich. Rich was telling me that he modeled the character after you. Talk show producer, a real estate <laughs> mogul who flips yeah. houses. Yeah. Oh, that's right, too. My character's flipping houses in the, in the <laughs> season as well. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it, it was fun to do. It was, it was a blast. Ah, that's so funny. Hey, Rich, um, what drew you to doing a web series? They're asking. <laughs> do what? Rich is asking. The disappointments is asking. What drew you to do uh, a web series? Oh, you know, because it was just a fun role, um, and and it was kind of written for me. So I thought, you know, I think that would just be a, a blast to do. The shooting schedule worked out. And, uh, and I was happy to do it. I mean, it's always just fun to take on new characters and new roles. So, uh, yeah, first, I, I was enjoying it. The first it. season was great. So I'm very excited for, for season two. You know, uh, you worked opposite Rich. He created it. He wrote it. He directed it. What, what's he like in all those different, different roles? Uh, well, in him working with, with him? Yeah, I mean, work, I you working opposite yeah, I've known him for a very long time. He's an amazing writer. The script was really good. That was really what what convinced me to do it. Um, I had some really wonderful scenes and and very heartfelt. Uh, so uh, he's a he's a terrific writer. So it was it was great to work with him. I mean, the whole team was real. It was funny. Getting Watanabe is an amazing actor. Uh, and just funny and dry. And so it's yeah, it's it's. Uh, he, he was fun. really great in the in the first season for sure. sure. Yes, yeah, he, he really he really was. Well, let's go back to March 17th, the big celebration 
for the Young and the Restless's 50th anniversary party. Talk oh. about, you know, coming home to General City that night and seeing so many of your old friends. It really was. First of all, my date was Jess Walton. Ah, so, that's so great. Uh, so, though, no, and that there's Robert Crampton, who yeah. I love Robert Crampton. And we got a chance to just to be able to connect with so many people that I was, you know, that I just love and adored and worked with for so long on Young and Restless. Um, everyone from from Barbara to, you know, um, and Melody and, uh, and Trisha, Trisha Cast, who plays Nina, and then Laura Lee Bell, and then, of course, all the Bells. Speak, speaking um, of them. There they, there they are. That's the hit of Jess Walton and Laura Lee and Tricia. I mean, it's just, it, it felt like no time had passed. So it was really, it was actually a very spectacular night and they did it really beautifully because they brought back so many main characters from over the 50 years. <laughs> Which is really, first of all, really remarkable. They even had something like Janice Lynn, some of the people who were on the show from day one. Um, it, it was pretty uh, fantastic night. Um, people made speeches, um, Eric Braden spoke, and, and, and of course, you know, the bells. And I mean, it, it was really, um, it was fun, as well as a, a great opportunity to catch up with old friends. Who you I don't haven't, you see know, that many, in a while. you don't see that many glamorous parties for daytime dramas anymore. Right, that um, one, this, I don't know that you could beat this party. I think yeah. this was the ultimate daytime um, I, reunion. I love party. that they did it. It, de you know, the number one show. It deserved to do that yes. for sure. Absolutely, for sure. very. And, it was beautifully done. And, and there's Timberland. The, yeah. So, now, at the time, uh, we did not know we were going to be working together on Bold and the Beautiful. So um, when Kimberlyn heard, and then when I came on the set that first day, she was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so, so yeah, that was great. It was really, it was super fun night. Well, let, let's talk about David Kimball. I mean, what yeah. has that role meant to you? You know, when you think back on, on your time at Young and the Restless. I, I mean, I have to say, and I've always said this, and I, and I said this to both Bill and, and Lee when, you know, God rest their souls, that, that um, you know, they really changed my life uh, doing that role and being there. It was, uh, it was such an exciting role. The thing I, I like about daytime is that it's very magical. With a, with a movie or uh, an episodic, you get the script, you know exactly what's gonna happen. You know where your character's gonna go, where, is it, where it's gonna end. On daytime TV, you have no idea. Like right now, you know, doing this for Bold and Beautiful, I have no idea what will happen. No idea. Um, and, and that's kind of the beauty of a soap opera. You don't know. And it's wonderful to sort of see the creative juices go with the writers and the producers as they kind of come up with twists and turns. And when I started with David Kimball, no idea where that character was going to go or evolve or grow into. And that's what made it so exciting because you'd pick it. You couldn't wait to read the scripts to see, oh, my God, what am I, what am I going to do next? And David uh, went through an incredible journey um, and transformation. <laughs> and, oh, I mean, I have moments that I just I, that stand out for me that I love, where I was, you know, he just wanted to be important and be successful, and you know, have people think he was powerful. And he would sit at his desk, and he would have a little button under the desk that he would push, and, it, and the phone would ring, and he'd go, "Oh, konnichiwa. Hi. Oh, it's just, yes, just no, 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 no. Oh, no, too much. Oh, thank you." And then he called Jer. Germany and he would speak in different languages and it was just it was a, it was a blast. I had so many fun things to do on that show. Thinking about the phone call you first got for to play David, mm -hmm. to where David ended up at the end. Yeah. How different did you expect that journey? Not at all. I started David. I think I was hired for three days to play David Kimball. Like, hey, come in and play this character, David Kimball. We got three three episodes for you. And it just kept going and going and going and going and going and going. So, uh, yeah, I had no idea. I was coming in. They, they hired me to come in to play Jill Abbott's male secretary. 
That's all I knew. And it just, it just rolls from there. That's kind of the magic of daytime television. You just, you never know. Yeah. That's and really and it really takes the producers and writers to see that magic that you all bring you, you know, working with Jess and then they, an idea sparks to the writers and away yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. And you never know. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty great. Yeah, that, that, that's wild. Well, all the fans want to know, you know, working with Trisha and Jess, if you can talk about working opposite both of them since you spent so much time with them. I mean, they're both, gosh, they're both wonderful actresses. I mean, I mean, really wonderful. I, I, I just recently watched a clip, one of my early clips from myself with Jess Walton um, early on when I was in the first probably year of being on the show. I was just I was just astounded by how good she is, um, and we have thank God we had a wonderful chemistry that we still you know have today, and um, she's just so present right there. Um, same with with Trisha. Trisha's a wonderful actress, um, very present, and you know you don't have a lot of time to rehearse um, on daytime TV, so you have to show up knowing your stuff and then just throw yourself into the moment. And both of them are really really experts at doing that and then you just you just play with what they're throwing at you which has got to be so much fun to play with what they throw at you because you don't know yeah you just got to be present and like oh really she's gonna oh really she's going there okay here we go um that's sort of the excitement of it how would you you know you talk about not much rehearsal thinking back to search and ryan's hope mm -hmm. how, how different is you know you just were you know at bold and the beautiful how fast is it moving in comparison to when you started yeah when i started on daytime television which was uh a, a long time ago that uh, <laughs> you don't want to say the year <laughs> hell no Are you kidding? <laughs> i was i was five years old at the time but um when i started on, on it was very different uh ryan's hope was shot as if you're doing a play so you would go in every morning and you would rehearse the whole thing start to finish every scene in order then you you do your blocking first then you do a rehearsal and then there was a dress rehearsal and then boom let's tape the show like it was live nowadays it's just very different you go scene by scene and you uh you sort of block and tape and block and tape and block and tape so it's just it's just a different way of doing it and it's a testament to soap opera actors because you really you have to be facile and and um you really have to know your stuff um it's 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 sort of condensed that rehearsal time of an entire day into just a, a very short period of time so it's exciting it's a challenge i i, I bet I, I i bet uh jennifer said death by trash compactor <laughs> now Everybody we don't know that, that. We never, you know, my, that's my thing. I, uh, I've had many people tell me, you know, that what they never found the body. He slipped out the back. He threw somebody who was sleeping in the street in the compactor and then closed the door and got out the back. So who really knows? <laughs> Whatever in happened. In daytime, you. you never know. Absolutely. Never know. Absolutely. Well, for the 50th anniversary, <laughs> I mean, look at that. You know, voted number 10, um, you know, of the top 10 moments on, on Young and the Restless. Yeah. Uh, that's got to feel nice, you know, for. Yeah. That, it, that he's, re you know, that story you are recognized in such a way for the work. you Yeah. Do. I mean, even to this day, and especially because a lot of times over the holidays, um, they'll play a lot of those storylines or, or sometimes when we were in the pandemic and they weren't filming, they would play a lot of that storyline. So it was really, uh, it was really great to see it and see that it's still relevant uh, and still, still plays, still plays well. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm very, I'm, I feel very honored that uh, that that has kind of held up over time. It it really has. Uh, Benjamin says, "Wow, today I watched Search for Tomorrow uh, from 1982, and you were playing Warren." <laughs> yeah, I wonder who I, I, I had multiple. Susie's uh, uh, characters played Susie. There was um, 
The first one was um, Cynthia. Um, oh my God, Cynthia. Um, I'm totally blanking. Elizabeth Swackhammer was one, and then um, we had numerous ones that were on. Um, but it was, that was a gosh, that was a roller coaster. That show too. Uh, my character made all kinds of transitions and depending on who the executive producer at the time was, everyone had their own vision. I mean, I got to play with Jane Krakowski, um, Olympia Dukakis. Oh, I, I, I already around. forget that Jane started on Search. Which Jane so started, I, they had my character kidnap her at one point and, and lock, hold her captive. Oh God, I remember those scenes. So yeah, Did I you, did you feel something in Jane? Did I, oh, she was, she was a young girl. She was early teens, I think. And I know that she was so, she was so driven and committed. And I remember there was a funny story. I think, I think she was on search for Mar at the time. And um, she apparently went over to, because she really wanted to be in, I think her first Broadway show was, um, uh, the, the, about the, the trains, uh, Starlight Express, Starlight Express. Starlight Express. Yeah. I think you're yeah, right. I remember she like ran over to one of audition for it and they said, no, sorry, you're too young. Um, but she was great. She was a great. Cynthia you know, Gibb. Cynthia Gibb. Yes. Thank God. Oh, God. <laughs> Love her. Thank uh, you, Neil. <laughs> and, and Terry Oaf. So I had three different Susies while I was on search for tomorrow. And that still plays a lot. There's a, uh, I know this is Search for Tomorrow fan club. Um, and that's always fun to like, you know, peek in there and look on online and see what's going on there. We're seeing what, what people are watching. It is amazing that, that we can watch stuff on YouTube. Yeah. You know, it, even because the shows don't release it, that we get to, you know, that fans have put stuff up because it is really fun to look back at some of those moments. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially for me, I look back and go, oh my God, look at that hair. What was that about? <laughs> That's wild. Remind me, who or what influenced you on going into acting? You know, I have to say it was my uncle Bubsy. I remember I was a young kid and he was, uh, it was a very well-known character actor named Eddie Barth. And he was in the movie Fame and Murder, She Wrote and all those things. And I remember he took me one time to New York. I was just a kid. And he had an audition for The Godfather, the movie The Godfather. And I was just sitting in the waiting room. And Bubsy went in, or Eddie, went in and uh, read for it. And then when the casting director came out, he said to, to Eddie, he said, Who, who's the kid? And he said, oh, you know, it's my, my nephew. So bring him in. So I went in, I met with the casting people. And they offered me a role in The Godfather. And of course, you know, Eddie, my, my uncle called my dad and went, hey, they want to put him in. A, and my father went, absolutely not. So, nope, didn't do it. Um, but then later ended up doing shows in college at University of Pennsylvania and decided, you know, maybe I think I'm going to go into theater. So uh, I had some people see me in shows and say, you, you, you really need, to, you need to, to go to a theater school. And that's what I did. I went to the Boston Conservatory. That, that's incredible. Damn, Dad. <laughs> Damn it. Hey, you know what? It's all worked out fine. It, um, it, it, it certainly, certainly has. Zoe 101, What talk about, first of all, you did that how many years ago? That was 15 years ago, and I, I played the dad on that. And now they're, they just re, rebooted the, they did a movie of it. Uh, my son in the movie gets married. So I'm hoping come the fall, it gets picked up as a series and I'm back to being a dad. I, does that surprise you out of the blue after all these oh, years? Yeah, that was another one of those things that just like out of the blue, you get a call and they're like, hey, you know, they're doing the movie. Um, you know, are you going to be around and what's going to happen? So um, yeah, with was a surprise the rebooting it, but but I've noticed that some of those shows, yeah, um, there, there's been a lot of rebooting of those period uh, from you know of those kinds of shows being rebooted. So I wasn't that surprised, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. It's coming out very soon um, on Paramount Plus, and then you know, fingers crossed that the series gets picked up. It, it's, oh, it must be nice to get phone calls about you know jobs that you liked. Yeah. Yes, or phone calls from the Bells. Like, yeah. 
come to our show. Like, hell yeah. Yeah, and work with people you've already worked with, which makes it like riding a bicycle. Yeah, it really does. It, it makes it very um, like coming home, which is which is really nice. And then I still get to do all my, you know, TV producing and all that stuff on the side. You, you certainly, certainly do. Congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, it's uh, it's I'm really proud of that series. Because we, we were able to, I guess we we're, we're in like 153 countries. When I mean, on is, so, is that like mind blowing to you? <laughs> very much so. Um, and the show did incredibly well. It was a, a great, a great series. And now um, I have a, another confidential, um, we have another deal going forward that we're starting to executive produce on right now. So a new a new show or the, something, something new something new with Tyler Henry. Awesome. One of the fans was asking. I don't I don't recall their name, so I apologize. But they're asking, how did you initially meet Tyler? Um, God, it was almost eight years ago now, and he, I was at a Christmas party, and someone um, said, "Hey, you're you're a TV producer. Hey, there's a kid over there. He was you know bullied and beaten in high school, and he had to drop out. And uh, oh, he talks to the dead." Oh yeah, this I gotta see. So I uh, I called him over and I said, "Hey, I hear you talk to the dead." You know, like on the street. Hey, kid, I hear you talk to the dead. And he said, "Uh huh." So I uh, I said, "Well, okay. Why don't you come to my house tomorrow and give me a reading?" And he gave me a reading that just, I mean, it blew me away. I, there's stuff he told me that no one, no one could have known. What? And, uh, you know. The, the what did you think of 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 mediums and, and psychics prior to that? I mean, I'm open minded, but I really I was like, eh, yeah, you could have Googled this or that. But then when you started seeing things that nobody knew, I'm like, holy crap. So I called my producing partner at the time and I said, you know what, let's let's do some tape with this guy. And we did. We started we, we set up a, a in my living room. We had him come. We had him come, and we brought in like five or six people. He didn't know. We kept him sequestered. We brought them in one by one, and each time he would bring them to tears. And by the end of taping that, even the camera guys that we had were like, "Come on, you're feeding him information from the." I'm like, "No, we don't even know this stuff about these people we brought in." So from that, we ended up selling his first series um, to E within. You know, like immediately. And, That's incredible. And That's just, just randomly tomorrow, I'm having John Edward on my show. Oh, and I, I I know him because he has a deep connection to Guiding Light. Um, he, when his mom passed, they had agreed on signs and they used to watch the show together. So, oh. but I, I've seen him do it in person as well. And it, you know, for, for Scott, it when you see like you know having it done to yourself and seeing other people and their reactions it 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 is something to see in person i i've come to the belief that there's so much more out there in the world that we just don't know and there's there's forces out there far greater than us so i i really i really believe that and i've always been a bit spiritual but working with tyler i really i he can do things that just sometimes prove that there's more out there that we just don't know. I, I, I've, I've come to the same realization. It's, it's, I think it's also with age to some degree, you, you, you just see more and you experience more. So you, yeah, as you can't explain. 150%. Yes. I, I, I think that's incredible. What was his reaction to the nomination? Oh, of course he was so excited. I mean, you know, of course, it's he was like, well, first, what? So, what does that mean exactly? Because <laughs> he's very, you know, he's not part of the business or any of that. He just does his thing. He's sort of a sweet, innocent kid, and we explain exactly what it means and all that. So, uh, well, well, let's hope, you know, when the all of these strikes are resolved favorably, yeah, that the daytime Emmys can take place. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, you know, everybody comes together and we really get off the picket lines and 
and, and make a, a really fair deal with everybody. Absolutely. For, for people watching, you know, who love this industry, in your own words, how would you describe, you know, what, what everyone's uh, sort of fighting for? I mean, I think there's there's a lot of fear around the AI thing, which is one. And then also streaming is another big issue. So, you know, I'm not the, the best person to talk of the talking points on it. But um, I, I think there has to be more um, uh, more of an equitable pay scale for actors um, and, and everybody coming together. So hopefully, you know, we have we have very good representation and hopefully everybody's going to talk and <sighs> get this resolved. Yeah, and thankfully for the daytime fans, uh, the daytime actors are under a different contract, so they will continue. Correct. Correct. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, traveling is one of your favorite things to do. Um, yes. You do it personally. You do it as host and correspondent for extras and mansions. Um, I hear you were recently in Portugal. Yes. Um, I shot in Portugal. We did a whole big Mansions of Millionaires, Extras Mansions of Millionaires, Portugal. So I got to tour all around Portugal. It was just beautiful. I mean, I, I've been able, I've been blessed. I've gone, oh my gosh, to some of the most beautiful places in the world from Tahiti, uh, Bora Bora, um, Fiji, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, and, you know, shooting in a helicopter over top of the Great Barrier Reef and landing on little sandbanks. Um, just uh, you know, some of the finest hotels in Paris and Rome and Florence, and it's it's like it's the best job in the world. It, it really is. I am going to Portugal for the first time to Lisbon in November. Oh, you're kidding! It's, you're gonna love it. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful city. I, I'm very excited. My husband has been, but my my mother's side of the family, you know, her name is Portuguese, so oh. I've always wanted to uh, experience. You know that part of it. You can go while you're in Lisbon. Go. It's only about 45 minutes away, maybe an hour to Sintra. Sintra I think. I think we are. Oh, I think. there's there's like old uh, 17th century uh, palaces, and it's really it's really pretty. It's I great. mean, are are you able to pick a favorite place you've been? Wow, that's really hard. I I think. Um, I mean, I, you know, the standard classic one would be Bora Bora because it's just spectacular. But I, I also um, a Great Barrier Reef, I think, um, Australia, New Zealand. I just I just loved it was beautiful. I'm um, saving that for my 60th. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's that's what, 20 years away. So. Yeah, sadly not. But thank you. <laughs> um, is there a place though that you like, you know, uh, a favorite city that you always go back to Paris or, you know, is there Florence. one that Florence, Florence, Florence mm -hmm. is, I mean, I love Tuscany, Florence. Uh, I'm, I'm a hundred percent Italian. So, uh, being able to go back there, that's, you know, where my family's from is, uh, that that's probably a matter of fact, it's a shame. I, I had tickets to, to fly to Florence, the end of August and, and some, you know, work stuff came up and I can't go. So I had uh, no. tickets, uh, but uh, no. luxury problems. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. Yeah. Talk about some of your favorite stories that you've covered for extra over the years. You know, I mean, there've been some that stand out. Uh, I got to do an, a one-on-one -on -one with Elizabeth Taylor and uh, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty special. That was pretty great. And I said, you know, she was in her elder years and I, I'm sitting there talking with her and I said, so, so Elizabeth, what, what, what motivates you? And she said, getting up every day. <laughs> like, oh my God, <laughs> waking up in the morning. There you go. I thought, okay, that is really sage advice. But uh, yes, yeah, she was wonderful. Uh, I I also covered Michael Jackson's 40, 35th birthday birthday party uh, at Neverland Ranch, oh, wow. which was insanity. Um, so that was pretty remarkable. There were there's certain ones like that that really 
you know, stand up David Bowie at his at his Hawaiian mansion at the time that the waves would splash right into the living room because it was built right out on the reef and it was all cement furniture and it was just spectacular. So yeah, I've had I've had some pretty great uh, that that spectacular. Yeah, that that is spectacular. Was hosting something you wanted to do? How did that actually come about? You know, I was on, I was just wrapping up on Young and the Restless, or I was near, near death. On yeah, Young near, I, near, near, near trans- trans- near trans- death experience. <laughs> um, I think, I think if I remember the timing and one of the executive producers at Extra saw me in a restaurant and said, hey, have you ever wanted to be a host? And I said, well, no, I never really thought about it. And they said, come in, come in. So I went into the extra office and there was an amazing executive producer at the time, Lisa Rigorosh Dempsey. And uh, she called me in her office and she sat me and she said, so what do you like to do? I'm like, um, well, I love real estate. I love travel. She went, great, you're hired. Send me to Hawaii next week. And that's how I started. That was it. And so I learned how to be a host and uh i'm you know the producer sort of guided me at first i said well let's shoot this and one producer who 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 would in the very beginning were like i don't know why you want to shoot it they ain't gonna put it on the air so like i learned very quickly what would work and what didn't and, and now you know now i've become a pretty proficient producer that's incredible yeah and also you know you were open to it. Totally. I was like, okay, here we go. Send me to Hawaii. I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it. And, and, uh, and yeah, that was probably 18 seasons ago. That's incredible. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And now I, get... here I am talking about daytime again. Crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like it, everything comes, goes around, it comes around again. Yep. Would you love a long-term role again? Would that be something that you'd love to sink your teeth into? You know, I, I, I would. I would be totally open to it because, uh, one, because I, you know, I have such trust in, in you know, in the Bells um, putting me on such a roller coaster. So, and that's what they do. They, you know, they, they're very good about crafting character and stories. So whatever they write, I know it's going to be great. Um, so yeah, and I, I love daytime. I mean, theater and daytime are probably my two favorite avenues to perform. So, um, and on that show, there's a, there's it, it gets into a lot of uh, really good relationship stuff. So I think that would be, a, I'd love it. That'd be fun to do. You wouldn't mind if it cuts into some of the travel? Eh, you know what? I've been traveling a lot for a long time. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I, I find my life goes in chapters. And so maybe there's a chapter where I'm, you know, doing daytime for a while again. I don't know. We'll, we'll see that. how it unfolds. Who knows what the universe brings? One, 150%. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How yeah. did uh, real estate enter your world? You know, from, um, the first time when I got on Ryan's Hope, I was always fascinated because one of my choices for um, careers was as an architect. I always wanted to I thought I'd be an architect. Then I got pulled into TV and, and theater. So when I was on Ryan's Hope, this little house came up next to my grandmom's house back in Collingswood, New Jersey. And I had saved up a little money from Ryan's Hope and I bought the house. And on the weekends, I would come down from New York and work on the house and I converted it from a two bedroom to a three bedroom. I spruced it all up. And this was before people even knew what flipping was. And I flipped it and I went, wow, that, that worked really well. So I just continued doing that. So I've, you know, probably flipped maybe 30 more, 30 or more houses over all this time. Um, and then, you know, wrote those wrote books. Yeah, about yeah. It. Um, uh, but that's but I've just always loved real estate, so that's why right now I'm I'm renovating and renovating a house right now. Uh, you know, it's what you do in your spare time. When after six o'clock, I go pick up a hammer and and start banging holes in walls, and uh, I love it. You you like actually doing the work? 
Yeah, I mean, of course, there's crew as well, but there's yeah. a lot of stuff I, I really like doing. Um, I, I like building and watching it change and grow, and uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. That's incredible. One of the fans just said, how do you know what's popular for finishes and colors? Wow. Um, you ask a lot of smart people. Um, I, you know, you ask a lot of designers, you know, the, like gray was really, really popular for a long time. And now gray's on its way out. And now browns and taupes are coming back. I'm like, okay, who, I don't know. I didn't know that. <laughs> but you ask experts or, uh, you know, countertops, granite, no more. Now it's all uh, the artificial tops and sapien stone and, um, and, and, and those kind of Caesar stone, all that stuff now is very popular. But again, you look in magazines and you ask experts because I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't make these decisions, but I, I'm smart enough to ask the people that know. I love that. And, and I love, you know, the fact that you, you know, I think it's so important because I wish I had really learned this at a young age, but what you did with the money from Ryan's hope at such a yeah. young age. Yeah. I mean, that is, um, such an incredible uh, education, mm -hmm. it, you know, for young people, save your money, buy something, because it really can help you later in life. Um, yeah, I, I, I learned that from my dad. My dad was one of the chiefs of the internal revenue <laughs> with the government. <laughs> so he, was, he was very much about save your money, save your money, invest your money. So I always did. I always took my the money from whatever I, you know, whenever I could scrape together enough, I would invest it in some sort of real estate thing. Um, and then I learned how to, you know, renovate and do things and then write books about it. So, uh, yeah, I learned that very young. Yeah, it's, I think it's I think it's a really smart lesson for people. And helps you, you know, yeah. to be successful later or to, you know, possibly pick and choose. Well, not yeah. just that. It's listen. Being an actor is really difficult. It's it's to make a living as an actor. It's it's really hard. You know, there's so many actors out there that are are you know doing guest stars and and seemingly wow, they must be raking it in. And unfortunately, because of some of the things people you know are striking for right now, you need to have um, something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. So um, having that for me, the real estate thing and understanding investing and flipping was was what i always fell back on so i think it's smart to always have a couple of things irons in the fire what's the best tip you could give people if they wanted to start flipping what um don't do it right now because <laughs> uh, we don't know well, i'm glad i asked that question for people yeah, don't just don't do it uh because it, right now the economy we don't know which way it's going um so right now things are still a little bit inflated so you want to be really really careful um i think the biggest tip and not to be too technical is always figure out what the house will sell for even before you buy it and if you so don't just think oh this is a good deal when you fix it up what's it going to cost what can you sell it for being if you had to sell it tomorrow what could you sell it for if it's all fixed up and if it doesn't, if you're like, oh, that's too high for this market, walk away. So it's kind of you make your money when you buy is the is the is the adage. Interesting. Uh, you know, I was going to ask earlier, did you grow up watching soaps at all? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Um, no, I, I, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, let me think. Dark, I remember Dark Shadows. Yeah. Wow, I was, I'm really dating myself. I was in the womb. I'm sure <laughs> I watched Dark Shadows. Um, but no, I don't think so. Um, kind of the first I got introduced to it was when I started on Ryan's Hope. So that was really the, my first experience with daytime. I love that. But you you really fell in love with the industry. Yeah, I like the I like the art form and I like the I like the camaraderie of a show and you have the same cast. But every day it's a different script. So there's something really cool about that. And for someone who loves stage like you do, mm -hmm. it is the most like stage than prime time or movies because you are doing it with other people. You know, it's not one shot or one camera on you. Right. 
it's an ensemble. Yeah. You're, you're really working with an ensemble. And, and that's that I really like doing that. And it's great because you never know next week I'll be in, well, we'll be working with these people, but now, oh, but then I'm back to these people. So you, you never, you never know how it, how it plays out. Remind me, you know, early on at Ryan's and, and search, who do you think you learned the most from? Um, I would probably say I learned the most Ryan's hope because there were some incredible, incredible performers in there, like uh, Helen Gallagher. Oh, was, I'm so glad you mentioned she's, oh, she's sitting down with me next week. Oh, OK. Well, then you can tell her that I probably learned more my very in my very beginning by watching her because she just I mean, first of all, and I never got to, you know, I never, you tell her the story because I never have told her this. Um, when I grow up, you know, I forget what it was. I saw her do a production of No, No, Nanette. She was an amazing Broadway performer. And I came on the show and I, I never, the entire time, I never got to tell her how much I respect her for being a Broadway musical theater person, but I would watch her. And she was just so specific and so direct and knew what she was doing. So I, I learned from watching her in Ryan's bar. Um, we never had story together, uh, but I would always watch her because we were, you know, it was a small cast. Her and also Louise Schaffer was another one that I learned so much from because I was, a, a, you know, a kid. And watching those two veterans um, really helped me, uh, help my work ethic and the discipline and also their way of like, they were, they were on it. They, they knew their stuff and they were just very specific all the time. So please share that story. With I, I, I will. I, I did not know that, um, you know, I didn't watch Ryan's, but mm -hmm. she has three Emmys and two mm -hmm. Tony Awards. Yep. Wow. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, no, she was an amazing musical theater performer. So, uh, and I never got to tell her that the entire time I was on the show because we never really crossed over. But I, I was always a fan of hers. I, I did watch uh, Louise. I believe it's Ryan's Hope stuff, but I could be wrong. Courtroom mm -hmm. scenes where she played the do it. Maybe it was Search, but I can't remember. I don't what think she tell me she played. She I think she had multiple personalities on whatever show. And I watched. Um, wow. She it was phenomenal stuff. Yeah, she's great. She's great. And to this day, I mean, I, you know, I still love and adore her. So yeah, she's wonderful. Well, I know you love stage so much. What are some of the roles you'd still love to play today? Oh, if you could pick and choose right now. Um, I, well, I just did this new play by a wonderful playwright, Peter Lefcourt. Um, and I, I just did that, the world premiere of that. Uh, if I could pick and choose right now, uh, man, did... Did I audition to play Jafar for a, maybe a Broadway replacement in Aladdin? Maybe. Oh, um, what a great, great role. Great, great role. Yeah, great didn't get role. it. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you know, a little David maybe in there? <laughs> you know, a little bit of, yeah. Little, yes, there's a little bit of, uh, of that in there. <laughs> so uh, that that is an incredible role. There's a, there's a lot of stuff I'd, lo I'd love to do, and I hope to to do that this coming season. You know, find a little time to do a, so, a, some more theater because I yeah. love doing it. Just, just throw more on your plate. Why not? Yeah, why not? You, you, you <laughs> I, 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 can do, I only need to sleep a couple of hours a night. Well, I, I was just curious. What is downtime like for Michael Corbett? Or is there downtime? You know, I love everything that I'm doing. So like if I'm, if I'm renovating or if I'm, I'm working on, you know, putting together a proposal for, for a, a, a you know, TV show, or if I'm doing extra and I'm traveling, I kind of like everything I'm doing. So downtime might be a go to the movies. Mm -hmm. That might be, that, that would be my, my big downtime. Uh, but otherwise I, I kind of like everything. I'm, like I'm enjoying this. This for me is downtime. Uh, this is fun. So I like everything that I do. So I'm really, uh, I don't need to take, you know, mm -hmm. take hats off and just sit in a corner and sleep. Do you watch a lot of other shows on TV, streaming or? Not a lot, but some, 
Not a lot. Not a lot. Is there one you really loved recently? Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, well, I also get to work on, I do voiceovers for a bunch of shows. So I, I was doing um, a lot of the voiceovers for uh, Schmigadoon, which is just such a hoot. Uh, and I wanted I, to watch that. I love the cast in it. I haven't watched it. Oh, it's great. It's great. And then I was lucky enough to work on um, this Ryan Murphy series, uh, Feud. So I got to do a lot of the voiceovers for that series, which is the, the new one called the just Capote and the Swans. So it's the next one. Um, so that one's going to be really narrating the story. No, there's it's called it's something called um, looping where you're adding in um, some of the extra voices that are needed. Oh, cool. So but you can see each episode as you're doing it. So uh, it's it's really good. It's going to be really good. He, he makes he makes some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, watching TV, I don't, I, I haven't, not a lot. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, you you cover the industry, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think well, I'm trying to think of what I've just recently started, just finished. Can't even remember. But yeah, well, that I think that that's just a product of too much TV in some respects. There's so much streaming that I can't remember what I just watched. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, know. yeah. Um, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, you, Michael Jackson, you mentioned. Uh, is there somebody you've always wanted to sit down with? Oh, my that God. That you still try for or would love to get? You know, I, since I don't do a lot of the celebrity sit downs, I do more like destinations and beautiful places. I think it's more like where would I want to go? I think. What do I want to shoot next? I want to go. I want to go. I've always wanted to go to the Maldives and shoot something in the Maldives. So maybe, maybe I'll get to do that. Um, but yeah, as far as the celebrity, you know, I'm, I think I'm a terrible interviewer. I, you yeah. know, I, I remember one time being on the red carpet, and and there was a a celebrity that I didn't recognize, and I, I said to her husband, <laughs> I said, and. And who's the lovely lady you're with tonight? Oh, God. And I won't say who it was, but she grabbed the microphone and she said, you don't even know who the hell I am, do you? And she threw the microphone down. So I'm a terrible red You, you prefer not. I, I I get it. I get it. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I can't say, I, I'll tell you off camera who it was, but <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like, I get too nervous interviewing celebrities on the red carpet. I don't want to do it. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do it either if I had the chance to go to the Maldives instead. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather interview the GM of a hotel than than a celebrity. Do you get to choose some of those places? How do yeah, how does that I, I, I pitch them all. I get pitch them, and then I then I put them all together, and then I go into a like sort of a production meeting and say, yeah. "Hey, these are the ones. These are the places that um, we have an opportunity to go. What do we think? This is it's got a lot of celebrity content, all that sort of stuff." So, it, it, it must be endless opportunities in some respect, you know, the world as large as it is. It was to... very difficult, obviously, during the pandemic that we couldn't go anywhere. Um, and now, you know, with shooting schedules, you had to be very specific and pick and choose. But, yeah, there's a lot of places I'd, I'd still love to go. So hopefully this time. Well, Michael, I mean you you uh don't sit still so i'm sure you will <laughs> i'm sure you will thank you so much for joining me tonight of course Congrats on the bold and the beautiful thank Fans you need to tune in starting friday need, yeah. they need to watch the bold, bold and the beautiful every day monday through friday but michael starts this friday yeah Stay well, my friend. Great to see Thank you. you. Thank you. Always good to see you. You too. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you to Michael Corbett for stopping by and talking to us about his long history on daytime dramas. And don't forget this Friday on The Bold and the Beautiful. Tomorrow afternoon, please join me when medium, author, and lecturer John Edward joins me live. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you'd like to stream an audio version of The Locker Room, 
Just search The Locker Room on your favorite streaming platform. I will see you all tomorrow afternoon. Have a great evening, everybody. And please, please stay safe.